Matt, I want to start with a simple question. What the hell is going on? <laughs> um, it's probably the most important question that anyone could ask right now, and more people uh, in power on supposedly on the on the right should be should be asking it. Uh, what's going on now is is nothing less than a uh, in an internal war in America, a war uh, on America, and it's been fomented for a long time in the schools, and we've we've really brought ourselves to this place where. We have a, a great numbers in the population who've been taught uh, to hate their own country and even oppose it. And we have a, a kind of uniparty establishment, especially on the left, though, uh, elites who are perfectly willing uh, to push this anti-American ideology in order <clears throat> to remain in power. And it really, <clears throat> at this point, it really amounts to identity politics as a form of, of state religion. Uh, you know, uh, in a lot of these states, uh, for instance, California, although I have to warn you, whether you're in Iowa or anywhere else, uh, this is with you. It's not just in crazy California. Uh, I was at church uh, this week and, uh, uh, you know, elderly people had to kneel outside in the dirt at this small country church, even though you could have easily distanced uh, inside the church because of our, our Lord and Savior, Gavin Newsom. And meanwhile, of course, uh, you know, we, we see all kinds of things being allowed uh, as long as it aligns with the state religion because they, they need uh, people to worship the state religion and they need to uh, uh, whip everyone into a frenzy as we move into November. Does this make any sense to you? It does. And here's, here's the part that I think, though, well, everything you just said is bad, <laughs> all right? Everything you just said is dangerous. But I don't think it's near the threat as the complacency of its opposition. I I've I've never seen I I've never seen in a, a group of insurrectionists in a society openly pick a fight with the people that own all the guns. That's historically not how this works. They 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 don't want you to use them on them and so they typically try to take them away from you first right that that's typically where we go first yeah. and instead they're skipping right past go and collecting their $200 and i'm i'm not advocating um you know that 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 we become an armed marauding band of vigilantes but I, I thought that the reason we so heavily defended the Second Amendment all these years was so that these thing, things like this could not happen to us. And I have for months gotten emails from people. I'm, I'm in my home. My dictatorial governor tells me, how did he get to be a dictator? You consented to it. You consented to it. The, the churches that won't open are consenting to that. You know, we are, we are consenting to all of this. Every last vestige of it. We're consenting to watching the month of June and, and watching people with the approved protests align thousands upon thousands upon thousands in the streets, create mass super spreader events. And then we're consenting to our Republican governors in places like Texas and Arizona saying you have to close your business down because, you know, we couldn't stop the 75th George Floyd funeral. We consented to all of this, Matt. And I think that's the part of it that I, I am... I am more dismayed by is this idea that we're just going to go along with it. And I, 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 that's the part, I guess I just did not see coming. Yeah. And, and there's, there's a reason for this though. I mean, and the, and the reason is <clears throat> on, on the right, traditionally <clears throat> we haven't been activists, right? We, we actually, uh, it's, it's a lot of people, folks just trying to live their lives and uh, want to be left alone. And this moment is going to require, as we move forward, a kind of organization and activism that, frankly, the right just hasn't engaged in. And partly that's because, as people say, uh, a lot of us have jobs and lives that we're just trying to live and, and busy, and we're not the kind of you know young college kids or, or uh, unemployed folks who uh, make uh, you know social justice, quote unquote, their lives work. Mm -hmm. But the other problem is that well, you notice we just, we, as you mentioned, alluding to some of the governors. A lot of red state leadership is complacent Chamber of Commerce Republicanism, and these people have no idea what time it is. And we're going to need leaders to help rally busy people so that we can unite and organize and act. 
And the way that you can you can protest, right? The way that you can fight back is by working together with other people to ensure uh, that there's a group that will protect you as you fight back against this kind of state religion being imposed upon us all. And so, so that requires organization, and that's going to require a different kind of leadership. People who understand this is an existential threat to the country. This is ripping the country apart. This is not going to end until a lot of these forces are physically opposed and removed from the streets uh, and, and until we clean out our schools. But let's be honest here. This is not something, and this is what I, I really want to emphasize, that your point is, is, is valid because this is not just something that happens in crazy California or New York or Illinois or the fancy universities. This is all over the country, and it will not be stopped until we have red state, especially leadership, that is able to call it out, to name the problem, and to actually strike back politically. And then outside of, of politicians, we're going to need organizers and activists in our own way to so that we can take action, uh, civil disobedience if necessary, against these measures, because they're not going to stop. And that's what we have to realize. So you're right, uh, people have been complacent. We've allowed this to happen, but it's hard to figure out what to do. People are asking me all the time now, what should I do? It's hard for them to figure out what to do uh, unless they can organize together and they have leaders who do make this uh, kind of a full-time job to lead and guide them forward in the fight. The other thing I would say is this, and every, every citizen can do this, but start here. This is the way Republicans should start thinking about this. Is your Are your Republican leaders, the people you vote for, have they spoken out strongly and conducted themselves well throughout the last you know, 90, 120 days? If they have not, you should make your voice known and you should join with other people to find someone who will speak out against what's going on and who does have the kind of courage necessary moving forward. And if you're, you know, you, you may like the person, they may have been fine in the past, but we're not in the past anymore. We're in a kind of wartime situation. Mm -hmm. And so we need to find the kind of politicians that we need and, and just ask them, will they denounce Black Lives Matter for the kind of organization it is, for the fact it wants to destroy the family and has no problem with all this violence and won't renounce it. Will they renounce Black Lives Matter explicitly? Will they say that? Will they, are they able to articulate that? If not, get rid of them. Get rid of them. What you pointed out, the cultural difference between conservatives and leftists, I've, I've talked about that as well with our audience for years. That We just want to live our lives. This is preventing us from doing that, though. Like, it, it's one thing to convince somebody who's got a small business with 20 employees to uh, to take that to take three days off to go protest some loony leftist professor at a university you probably wouldn't even send your own kids to, right? Okay? Right. Or they wouldn't take his class. Or if they did, they, they just check the box for a requirement. They go on and go and tune them out, at, at, get the score they needed to get, and just get on with the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, something like 90-something percent of the businesses in America have 500 or fewer employees. The major corporate sector in America, the corporate sector has been, sector's been taken over by leftism. But those other 90% of businesses that have 500 uh, or less employees that are not essential, those are our people. Our people own most of those businesses. They're the ones losing their businesses. Our people aren't on a government, aren't, aren't, our people are the minority, the 44% of whatever it is, Americans who work in the private sector that are subsidizing everybody else. They're losing their jobs. And, and that's the part about this. I understood why we weren't as activist as they were for many, many years. And frankly, I don't want to be. I, I'd, I'd rather focus on those other things. But these things are now, the, 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 the life we say we'd rather just go live than do this is, the, is what is being threatened now. I, we can't have a wedding, a funeral, can't take our kids to, our, to the Little League game, can't have a prom, can't put them in school, the, 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 can't open our businesses up. This is the stuff that's being threatened now, and still we kind of just sit home and email the Steve Day shows of the world. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that. Uh, I still. You're right, but I don't think that most people understand the ideology behind this. Even I mean, I don't. I think it's hard for a lot of folks who are trying to live their lives, even when this happens. It kind of happens. And you say, "What is going on? Why is my life interrupted? Why are Why are the governors saying I have to do X, Y, and Z? This seems." Uh, ridiculous and is sort of confused, but you know, realize what also is being pushed on the left is a, a the, the woke ideology or the identity politics, which absolutely wants to uh, implement a kind of reverse Jim Crow, 
where racial, sexual, and gender categories are all going to be how you're sort, you, you and your kids are going to be sorted out uh, by law. And, and there is no equality under law anymore in their minds, and they're imposing that. And that affects small business like, you know, you wouldn't believe, right? I mean, the, the, that legislation, that legal enacting of the, the communist woke HR uh, propaganda, I mean, that, that's a real thing for small businesses across America, and they've already lost out on that. And like you say, uh, I, I was just talking to uh, someone I know very well who works for a large telecommunications company where a lot of the C-suite is they're all foreign born. None of them are American. They're all mm -hmm. political. Acts. And, uh, you know, they have no idea that half of the union workers disagree with them on this stuff. But every week they they bring in, uh, you know, some uh, social justice agenda piece and have the struggle sessions and tell them how they should be voting and, and all this. So so it's already here for you. It's already here for you. And it's not going to stop unless uh, we do take concerted political action. Now, again, like I said, I think that that's what the individual person needs to understand. And we're going to need individual people to step up and realize, if not me, who? Who's going to run for office? Who's going to oppose uh, the weak sauce uh, Republican who's in my district now? Uh, people are going to have to step up in the midst of this because what they need to understand is it's not going away. And it's, not, it's going to affect you. It's going to affect your kids. And it's going to affect your business. And my gosh, right now, small business across America is just being gutted. It's just being eviscerated in, in so many sectors uh, because of the, the virus restrictions. And, you know, do you think they care? Do you think they're going to stop? I don't. No. I've got about 90 seconds here. I've, I've, I've told my audience for years, Matt, we're not a nation of laws and we never have been. We are a nation of political will and we always will be. You can put any law on the books you want. If nobody's going to enforce it, or no one wants to obey it, it's not worth the paper it's printed on. Our people are going to have to learn mass defiance. Mass def Why did it take months for somebody to do what John MacArthur did in your state last week? Why, were, why, weren't, why, was it, why was there a single church in Nevada closed once it saw the U.S. Supreme Court said that strip clubs and, and, the, and the slot machines could be open, but they could not? We're going to have to learn what what you know uh, people who came before us have had to learn the answer is no no i will not comply with that my answer is no absolutely and and we need to understand your listeners need to understand that this is a time to find that courage to find that courage you won't be alone uh, the, the entire the entire media business on the right in the last 10 years is based on people who stood up and then gained a following because they said no. And you listening right now can indeed do that. And we're all going to need to find the courage to do that if we are to stop this. Matthew Peterson, VP of Education over at Claremont Institute. Good to have you back on the show, brother. Thanks for joining us here today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Anytime. You bet.